In the early years of Doctor Who, merchandise wasn't really as broad or extent as it is today. You didn't have action figures or play sets that were more accessible with an online search. Back then, you really just had the show and that was it. But when the show introduced their first successful reoccurring villain, the term Dalek Mania swept the UK in force. Kids across the country were obsessed with the metallic pepper pots. That became an overnight success. But then that all changed in 1965. Introducing Louis Marx and an American toy maker who, with the help of his brother David, founded the company Louis Marx and Company. DoctorWhoToys.net stated that by the 1950s, they were the Hasbro of its day, and that it was one of the most successful manufacturers of the early sci-fi and space toy age. Sadly, the company ended up going bankrupt in 1980, but going back to 1965, they began to produce Dalek toys with robot action, aka bump and go action. These were seen as very successful across the UK. In this day and age, these toys sell for ludicrous prices that I myself couldn't simply part with that kind of money. So today I'll be taking a look at something that is technically a reproduced item by Daypole in the 1990s, which is this version right here that we're going to be taking a look at. Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who related video. Today we are yet again diving into something that was created even before I entered the world, which is in fact this Bump and Go Marks Dalek. Well, I say Marks Dalek, but it is in fact a reproduction created by the Daypool company, which had the license to create many different arrays of Doctor Who merchandise. It was the first ever company to ever produce 3.5 to 4.5 inch scale figures in the late 80s. And one of these products was in fact this. Now I don't know the ins and outs and how they got the rights to produce these or how they got the molds in the first place, but I am intrigued on how nice looking these toys really are. The fact that this toy in particular is over 30 years old at this point, I am surprised on how this in particular has stood the test of time, as I myself have seen several Daypole Repros damaged or cracked due to mishandling over the years. But with mine, the appearance wise, there doesn't seem to be any cracks or dents whatsoever. So before I take a look at the Dalek, let's begin by taking a look at the packaging. So the toy itself comes in this marvellous yellow and blue style guide. On the front you have this gorgeous hand-painted Dalek, as well as text on the front saying Doctor Who and the Mysterious Dalek, in this amazing red and yellow vibrant text. As well as that you get some information stating that this toy is battery operated, as well as having amazing robot action. This was clearly a big deal. On the side you also have the same text of the Dalek, as well as a little Robin Hood guy on the bottom left. I don't know if he was a mascot or not, but there you go. And then on the back you have a scroll that states that this toy is a special limited edition and is only limited to 10,000 and mine being 9,388. Another thing that indicates that this is a Dapol reproduction is the fact that it has Dapol product as well as a bit of text stating that they used the original moulds. And another thing to add is that you also get a certificate of authenticity which has some information about the original Dalek toys and some information about Louis Marx toys. It's a nice little thing to have. Taking the product out of the box, the Dalek comes with its appendages package separately. So there is a bit of construction that you need to do here. Get an adult to give you a hand if you are struggling with this bit. But when fully constructed, it's an amazing toy. I love how basic it is due to the fact that Daypol was faithful to the original toy. Yeah, the proportions on the Dalek itself isn't accurate whatsoever, but it still doesn't take any enjoyment away from the toy itself. The simplicity of the construction means there isn't any movability in the eye stalk or his gun or plunger. But this was a sign of the time as the toys themselves did not have any articulation in the 1960s. Firstly, taking a look at the dome and the neck of the Dalek. As you can see, the dome has been molded in this lovely gold color. It just looks so vibrant and crisp, but it just goes to show that this has been taken care of and not neglected. The eye stalk is replicated very well, which is based on the later variants of the toy that came out in the 70s, as the original had this bulbous red eyeball with more rings around the eye stalk. But here they've just gone down this route and used the eye stalk that looks more something like what was seen on TV. 
You also have these little raised pieces on the dome, which are meant to represent the dome lights, which are the same color to the rest of the body. And then moving down to the neck, you have the rings and the pins all painted in gold. But just like the palatoid Dalek, the sections where the mesh is supposed to be, they've instead opted to use this red transparent plastic. The reason for this is that the Dalek, when switched on, a little light goes off when it's moving about and it illuminates the neck, which I think is a really neat part of the toy. And I'm surprised Daypole were so dedicated to actually try and, and get this toy super accurate, even down to the electronics. Moving down to the midsection, you have all these little screw details here around the shoulder section. This here has all been painted in gold, and the same goes for the gun and the plunger. Speaking of which, the gun here is based on the earlier model of the Dalek, which had the Perspex discs in, which was seen from the Daleks right up until Dalek's master plan. And then with the plunger, the actual arm and the plunger are actually two separate pieces, which was something that was seen on later releases of the toy in the 1970s. Again, this has all been painted in gold and it doesn't seem to be any fading or bleeds or whatnot, and it just looks exquisite. And then moving down to the skirt, this is where most of the inaccuracies take place. The front panel only has one panel of hemispheres and then the base itself is all just rounded off. And this is not even a nitpick at this point because what we have to understand is that toy manufacturing was a different beast back then. It was very limited. They most likely had very little photo references in 1965 to what we have today where, you know, we have 3D scanning and whatnot, where you can actually, you know, take a camera and scan the entire Dalek prop to get make sure every nook and cranny is accurate. You know, it, it, it doesn't really bother me here, to be honest. <laughs> Now to move on to the features that this Dalek has. To activate the robotic action, you simply flick a switch and watch it go. Bloody hell, I can imagine people back then going absolutely mad seeing this. Like I said, when activated, you can actually see the light going off which illuminates the neck bin section. And the bump and go action is great. However, due to the great speed that this toy goes, over time, these would end up cracking due to the fact they would either fall off tables or smashing into walls. And this is just due to how flimsy the plastic kind of is. It's not really too solid. And even dropping one of these could mean it could shatter into a thousand pieces. So just be cautious with this. Another thing to mention is that the toy itself isn't good when placed on carpet making the toy either go round in circles or barely move at all. Now, I do want to add that I do in fact have two of these Daleks. The silver one I actually got for Christmas a few years ago. However, after opening it up on Christmas Day, I placed some batteries into it and nothing seemed to work. I was gutted at first, but a few days after Christmas, I came across another Daypole Repro online, which is in fact the reason why I opted to review this version instead of the other one. Quickly comparing the two side by side, these are completely identical down to the same detail. Literally, the only difference is the colour scheme. Marks was renowned for doing this even when they were releasing these. I believe Dapol only ended up releasing three colours, but I could possibly be wrong. Overall, I think this Dalek toy is magnificent. Not only was it one of the first toys to start off endless merchandise that we have today, even the BBC used these model toys in the actual show itself on a few occasions. This one is one of my all-time favourite bits of merchandising that I have collected over the years, and I do want to try my best to get an original at some point, as it would be cool to have. All I can say really is that if it weren't for Lowy Marks, we may have not even got all this merchandise that we have today. So cheers, Louis. Thank you all for watching and see you again soon.